Hello, keyboard enthusiasts. Uh, I am Simon, and this is my review of the TKD Cycle 8. Now, this is a board that I have been anticipating for quite a while, and I'm sure a lot of you have been anticipating it for quite a while. It's a TKD design. If you've seen the Cycle 7, you know what that means, uh, TKL. Uh, and you have the option of wing key and wing keyless. It uses the balls latch design, just like the Cycle 7. And it's a 8 degree angle with a really low sub 19 mil front height. And it comes in a variety of colors, of course, to be expected. That's anodization and coatings. And it starts at 155 bucks for the base model. That's pretty much it for the intro. It's a cycle eight. Let's roll the intro. And here she is. Uh, before we get into it, let's run through the disclosure super quick. As many of you know, uh, this channel is all about providing the most unbiased review possible and discussing keyboards like one should. Now, I have worked closely with TKD in the past. I have direct contact with the primary designer from the Vertex side of uh, the company, and we've worked together in the past. This board was sent to me with the implication of keeping it, although that's against my personal rules. Uh, this channel does not take free review units. This channel does not get paid for any video content. And most importantly, this channel has no sponsors. Uh, this channel is funded entirely by viewers like you over on Patreon. So, uh, oh, also nobody gets to see the video early except for the patrons. So I also had involvement in the addition of a particular feature in this board. So I was involved in the creative aspect. So I might be slightly biased in that regard. Keep that in mind. And once again, before we get into it, let's talk about some concerns that I had and a lot of people had uh, coming into this board. The Chinese group buy has already happened. Uh, people that have ordered their units in China have already gotten them. That whole process was not fun for a lot of people. Uh, primarily, TKD decided to vendor it themselves in China instead of going with a large vendor. So communication was poor. A lot of people had issues with customer support and communication. Thankfully for the international run, uh, the, the lead vendor is ClickClack, who is a vendor that has historically done very well. And there are many other vendors in your local area. So hopefully communication is not an issue. The previous board before this, the Cycle 7, had PCB issues. For some reason, they changed the design of the PCB between the Chinese version and the international version. Uh, for this one, they have not. So the PCB that I have here is the PCB that you're going to get. Again, the uh, Chinese version of this had titanium as an option, which in my personal opinion was a terrible idea trying to implement titanium in a board that starts at 150 bucks is not great. And they have removed the option for titanium for the international buy. And I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, but I wanted the titanium. No, you don't. You, you, you don't want a low budget attempt at titanium. You want titanium that is well finished, well coated. And unfortunately, that tends to cost a lot more. Another one. This board lowest spec in China was $145. So there are three specs to this board. The lowest one had a fully brushed back. So brushed, brushed, and then brushed. Hello. That has been removed. So the upper two ones, so 155 and 165, are brushed, polished, brushed. So that's 155. And the highest one is brushed, PVD, brushed. The bottom one was removed from the international buy, and I spoke to Lolo about it, and he said, listen, it wasn't that great. It, the finishing was not that good, and I prefer to sell for $10 more and give people a better product than, you know, try and, you know, push 
for the race to the bottom and have the lowest possible price. And fair enough, I respect it. And finally, uh, there is something new in this board. And that's something new is brass and brass was very rushed. Uh, this is the first unit in the world to have brass prior to this unit. There was no brass. Uh, they sent me brass parts. So that's a brass battery cover as well as brass weights on the interior to test. I got to test them about one week ago and my impressions were so positive as well as the impressions of everybody that was watching live on stream and listened to the sound tests that was also positive. So brass was rushed in two ways. One way is I got it very late. And the second way is as a result of that, it's being priced at a fairly low MOQ. So the brass parts are expensive in addition to the rising cost of brass. So that should be the disclosures and the concerns out of the way. Let's get into the actual review at this point. So we're going to start off with the packaging. We on the world tour. So this is the new packaging. This is the external packaging as in they will ship in this box. It's a big improvement. It'll have your order ID. It'll have the vendor. Tiny is not a vendor. I just stuck this on to be cute. Very simple box. In the simple box, you will find two boxes. You will have your keyboard box and you'll have your accessories box. Your accessories box will include your mounting hardware, screws, uh, gaskets, feet, plates, PCB, as well as any weights if you do order them and they are shipped separately. Uh, also, you get free stabilizers, which I have used in my build, because if you get them for free, you use them. The main keyboard box is an improvement over the Cycle 7 box. Generally, I don't really care about external packaging because it's garbage. What I care about is giving me a nice hard case. And they have. But the boxes are nicer. You can tell that they've spent a little bit more money on the boxes. I don't really care. I'm just happy that the external shipping box looks nice, safe, rugged. It's got foam on every angle you could ever want. So no complaints. Hard case. It's fine. Doesn't have a handle. It's got this little loop in there that you can use. Not the best hard case in the world. Again, we're talking about a TKL that starts at 155 bucks. It's simple. It's padded. The board fits inside. Here we have my steel battery cover as well as steel internal weights. We'll talk about those later. Also, this is a lie. So generally unboxing experience, build experience, all of that is as to be expected, similar to the cycle seven. So we'll start from the exterior, work our way to the interior as is customary. Uh, first things first, the anodization is just as good. It's identical. The anodization uh, between this and my cycle seven, it's the same thing. It's the same color. Uh, the grains match up. The smoothness of the anodization is exactly the same. Uh, again, for the price of this board, the anodization is concerningly good. And I have tested out their TKD coating uh, with my group by variant or international group by variant of cycle seven. And it's good. It's almost as good as matrix coat, kind of. One large takeaway is that the weight finishing is a lot better. Uh, the PVD on the Cycle 7 was the bottom of the barrel PVD in terms of quality, the kind where if you rub your nail on it, you'll be able to scratch it. This is a lot better. This is substantially better PVD. And the brushed steel, quite nice as well. It's a nice improvement. 
I like. The most important aspect is the balls. Ball catch system is fantastic. It allows you to make changes very quickly. Uh, I rebuilt this yesterday uh, for reasons we'll talk about. And being able to just open and close it super easily. If you forgot, for example, to plug in your JST cable and you're sitting there like an idiot, it's a five second fix instead of a five minute fix, which is nice. So I did a full rebuild in 90 minutes while live streaming. So while talking to people, answering questions, drinking some beers, uh, that's a full desolder, uh, plate swap and resolder. So uh, originally I had built this with an FR4 plate because I had yet to try FR4 in a cycle. I decided to swap to polycarbonate. And I swapped to polycarbonate because one, not a big fan of the FR4, and two, when I spoke to Lolo, he said that this was basically explicitly designed for a polycarbonate plate. So, okay. So let's, I'll give you guys like a super quick tour of the internals. We're not gonna do anything crazy. Or externals and internals. Uh, front height is very, very low. It's very comfortable. Uh, side design, it's fine, looks good. Rear, clean, simple. This thing's gonna get very fingerprinty. If I put gloves on, people complain in the comments. And if I don't put gloves on, then I leave fingerprints everywhere. USB port fits the big chonker. That is our test. If this fits, anything will fit. The feet are inset into, into the bottom as they should be. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful putting these in because if you don't put them in perfectly, they pop out a little bit. And if you move it around your desk, you will absolutely lose a foot. They send you two extra feet, just in case. And then here, the top, this is the simple variant. Uh, there are two variants. There is a variant that has the big LED ashtray looking thing, and there is the good looking one. Uh, if you prefer the LED one, go for it. Now, the LEDs are still there on the PCB, so once you build the board, you have to go into VIA and turn them off. All right, let's have a look at the inside. Boom, top comes right off. We've got one, two, three, four ball catches, as well as one, two, three, four sets of balls on the bottom. Fairly simple. Over here, there's a tiny piece of foam. And over here, there's a tiny piece of foam. This is something we discussed on the cycle seven. Uh, because of the way that this is designed, and I will show you. Because of the way that this is designed, the bottom case has no sides. So normally a case bottom will have sides, but in order to save on machining, save on cost, et cetera, et cetera, there are no sides on the bottom. You only have the back and the front ledges, which then means when you put the top on it, you can see uh, theoretically see through the keyboard. So let me get the angle. You see that angle? Now, this is with the case not assembled. Now we assemble it and no more gap. That's what the foam is for. It's fine. I understand why that's the case. It is what it is have ourselves a look at the bottom. We've got one, two, three, four ball catches. We've got our mounting points. Uh, there are two mounts. There are the beans and there are the O-rings. Uh, I, for one, am a beans enjoyer. That's what I did in my cycle seven. I like it here on the cycle eight. It's good beans. Alternatively, the nice thing is you can swap it out super quickly. All right, on our bottom, we have a battery cover. By default, you will get an aluminum battery cover. This is equivalent to basically just having a full aluminum bottom, which if you've ever typed on a TKL, you know that's not really the best sounding thing in the world. Also on the base model, underneath the battery cover are two pieces of foam instead of batteries, assuming you don't get a wireless version that requires batteries. Uh, you can upgrade to a steel battery cover, which I would personally, uh, personally not recommend, or you can upgrade to a brass battery cover. 
which is a little expensiver, okay? Uh, what I do recommend is you absolutely get the internal weights. Uh, if you want to go with the steel weights, that's fine. If you want to go with the brass weights, that's fine. It's a $6 difference. Uh, we'll talk about that more when it comes to the uh, sound aspect. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We have a daughter board that sits underneath the battery cover. Uh, I will show you what it looks like because I have a spare. Okay, I had a spare. Did I, did I eat it? Ah, there it is. So, small little daughter board. Ribbon cable. Not the biggest fan of ribbon, but it allows you a little bit more space to work with because it's very, very thin. Uh, the cable is a little on the short side. I would have liked it to be a little bit longer. So uh, the only way that you can plug it in with two hands is by doing this maneuver. So you slide it in. As you drop the PCB, you make sure that the thing goes in the hole and then you latch it. It is now latched. So this is as far as I can get on either side. Not amazing. It wouldn't have hurt to go with just a little bit of a longer, uh, longer ribbon cable. Uh, also, for those of you wondering, ribbon versus JST versus Molex, in the vast majority of situations, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the limiting factor is not the technology that you are using. The limiting factor is the quality of the connector that you are using. Just like anything else, there are good quality connectors and poor quality connectors. And, you know, ribbon and Molex get a bad rap because, you know, people's experiences with very, very, very cheap connectors. But the connectors here are quite good. Works fine. Let's have ourselves a look at the PCB. It's a good PCB. It's a little bit dirty. It's gone through a couple builds already. Uh, nothing is marked on the PCB in terms of... Uh, your bottom row arrangement or uh, key labeling for somebody that's more experienced, not an issue for somebody doing their first build might be an issue, but realistically, somebody that's doing their first build is probably going to go hot swap anyway, which is an option. Uh, the controller is a STM, so it's an arm. Uh, this one does not suffer from the problem that some arm MCUs struggle with, which is when you plug in the USB, it takes like two, three seconds for your computer to recognize it. This works nice and quick. Here we can see the LED panel, and on the front we can see where the LEDs would shine through the LED hole. Uh, I'm not going to get the caps off to show you the plate. There are no cuts on it. It's just a standard full plate. It's a nice little plate. Now, uh, the FR4 plate does have a cut between the FRO. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it out. So I have all three plates. All right, here we are. So the FR4 plate does have a cut here between the F row and the num row, as well as a cut between the nav cluster and the 60% cluster. Not a big fan of it. It just makes building more annoying because you push a switch in here and the thing collapses and you have to pull on the plate as you put the switch in. It's not fun. Uh, as for the aluminum plate, I have yet to open it. So we're gonna open it live. There we go. Yep, looks like the aluminum plate also has the same exact cuts. Again, FRO and between NAV and 60% cluster. Uh, all the plates are universal, so ISO and ANSI. Generally, that will freak me out, and it'll freak you out if you've ever built an ANSI board that has an ISO cutout because your, uh, your pipe key will have an issue being crooked. Thankfully, there's a, there's a little nubbin there to help keep it aligned. And as you can tell, mine is aligned. I didn't put much effort into putting the switches in the PCB. Everything is nice and straight. Alrighty. What is next? I mean, we'll call it, honestly, we'll call it there with the case tour. I don't want to go super in depth with this. So traditionally I will spend four to five weeks typing on a keyboard uh, before putting out a review. Uh, unfortunately, the group buy for this is happening so soon that I want to get uh, I want to get my thoughts out now and my recommendations out now for people to know about it. Of course, I'm still going to spend more time with the board, but 
I don't think, you know, any of my thoughts are going to dramatically change. All right, so let's talk feel, let's talk sound, let's talk, you know, the questions that most people have. So typing feel is basically the same as the cycle seven, but TKL size. So you, you get your beads, you get your O-rings, pick whichever one you want. You're going to get a decent amount of bounce out of it. Not a huge amount of bounce. We're not talking like uh, uh, round one, uh, Gion works F1, where it's th the bounciest boy in the world. Uh, it's about as bouncy as, let's say, the vertex angle, for example. Uh, secondly, you will get a little bit of flex out of the polycarbonate PCB. It's nice, it's comfortable, it's enjoyable. Yeah. So the stock configuration of this, which is the $155 version, in my opinion, is not as good as the Cycle 7. So the amount of weight in this, proportional to the entire size of the body, so the amount of, let's say, weight to aluminum, the ratio here is a little bit lower than it is on the Cycle 7. So the Cycle 7 is a little bit deeper sounding by default. Now, the Cycle 8 in its stock configuration is a little bit more higher pitched than I would like. So it's going to need some add-ons to get you close. So taking that into account, of course, I do recommend the brass battery cover. And then for the internal weights that go underneath the brass battery cover, you either go steel or you go brass. This pushes the price up to $211 with all brass or $205 with brass and then steel under. That kind of changes things. That's a 25% difference in total price. So I think the base model at $155 is okay to good, but not great. Pushing it up to the full brass, I think that makes it roundabout great, but not excellent. I don't know, that, that's my take. So although this review seems critical, we have to, we, we have to look at it through the lens of the price. Now, the base model Cycle 7 was $139, which adjusted for inflation is like $143 to $145 right now. The base model of the Cycle 8 is $155, but it's got far more material, far more. So they start with a larger bar stock. There is far more machining on said bar stock and a lot more surface area to be finished. In terms of that, the price is excellent. Now, it will take more work than a Cycle 7 to hit a desirable sound profile. This is going to sound higher pitched than your standard Cycle 7 build. So, what can you do? Uh, you could go FR4, which is just going to mute the sound, which is, uh, you can absolutely go for the uh, brass battery cover as well as the brass internal weights. I strongly recommend you do. If it's slightly out of your budget, uh, brass battery cover and then steel internal weights. And if that's still way out of your budget, at the very least, try and get some internal weights in there. It'll it'll help quite a lot. And then if literally all you can afford is the $155, then consider one of the three to four case foams that they give you. It might help out a little bit. It you know, might bring the, the pitch a little bit down. In other comparisons with the Cycle 7, obviously anodization is perfect, feel perfect, they're identical. Uh, would you consider a Cycle 8 if you already have a Cycle 7? Yeah, I think they're different enough. They're similar enough because they've got the ball latch system, the colors are identical, the mounts are the same mounts, but it's different in terms of the feel. You'll get a little bit more flex out of this. Uh, it's a different form factor, obviously, and the sound profile is different on the Cycle 8. You may not like that, or you might really like that. Uh, personally, I build this with Gateron X. I uh, oil, oil lubed Gateron X, so they're not going to sound as deep as a uh, 
grease lube gutter on X. So like a 205 grade zero or 203 grade zero. I lube this with 107. Uh, I prefer the feel that way. Everything when it comes to keyboards is a trade-off. I trade it off having a little bit higher pitched of, you know, switch sound or a little bit comfier of an experience. Uh, I would recommend going PBT unless you want it to sound very high pitched then throw on some DCS or throw on some ABS, you'll be fine. Uh, besides that, definitely go for the polycarbonate plate. Uh, polycarbonate is going to be higher pitched than the FR4, maybe even a teensy bit higher pitched than the aluminum, but the polycarbonate is very nice. Uh, off Lolo's recommendation, I tried it. It's, it's the better of the three material options. Uh, for the back weight, I honestly don't care what you get. I think paying extra for PVD is kind of stupid because polished is going to be shiny. Uh, with PVD, you have the risk that the PVD is going to come off. The polish is not going to come off the steel. And even if it does, you can just repolish it. You can't re-PVD this in your own house. So with all that in mind, what I'm going to do is I am going to give you multiple sound tests. Okay, now these sound tests are recorded with a stereo pair of pencil mics uh, with no filters, no, no touchy touchy. Okay, so you're going to hear background noise, you're going to hear the AC, you're going to hear my neighbors farting, but you're also going to hear what the board truly sounds like. So as always, what you should do is adjust your volume to where the background noise of my room matches the background noise of your room, and then you'll be able to hear what the board sounds like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a comparative sound test. That way you can compare a uh, steel battery cover to a brass battery cover, and then we add weights versus no weights. I'll give you a few options just so you get a feel for what sounds better to you. All right, so. I'll roll the sound tests now, and after that, summary time. All right, a few things that should be noted prior to us getting into the sound tests is, uh, first of all, I was not sent an aluminum battery cover. So unfortunately, I cannot give you a comparison with that. Uh, the second thing is the weight of these weights. Uh, the steel weights are marked as 340 grams, and they are closer to 311 grams. And the brass weights are also marked as 340 grams, but they're actually closer to 350 grams. So do with that information whatever you wish.
hello. It's summary time. Yay. Uh, I'm going to make this summary as confusing as possible for those of you that didn't watch the video. Good luck. Uh, first of all, the sound test. There are essentially six different sound tests there, uh, all with a uh, steel to brass battery cover comparison, and then with a weight comparison of no weight, steel weight, and then brass weight. Uh, it's up to you to decide the one that you like. Uh, try to do a comparative analysis on your own. See what combo feels right for you. Uh, some of the combos sound a little bit wonky. And some of you may not be so sure on the brass battery cover, which, fair enough. Uh, I like it. I like the full brass setup. It gives you a little bit more weight in the case. Uh, it helps with case vibrations and... Uh, the backspace doesn't sound the most amazing, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, in terms of the actual summary of the keyboard, from a value perspective, you're not going to beat a Cycle 7 or a Cycle 8. That goes without saying. Every other keyboard is going to get cycled. Uh, overall, just as good as Cycle 7, although you're going to have to work a lot harder to make it sound as good. Uh, for those of you with some sort of building experience, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, for those of you that are coming in fresh, and it's going to be like your first nice TKL, maybe throw a piece of foam in there. It's okay. I won't tell anyone. Uh, besides that, you legit can't beat the value of this keyboard. It is a fantastic, happy keyboard. So I'll leave it there for you guys. Uh, if you like the video and you want more keyboard reviews, uh, give this video a like and subscribe for upcoming videos. And if you want to support the channel, uh, because running this channel is very expensive with no sponsors and no paid reviews, uh, there's a Patreon link in the description if you want to help me out. Thank you. And have a lovely flamingo. Guess who forgot to mention something? This guy. Uh, for those of you wondering what I will be doing with the keyboard, since I don't keep free review units, is uh, I will be purchasing a identical unit with my own money and giving that away to offset me essentially getting a free keyboard. There you go.